Nature is incredibly skilled at chemistry. It can use sunlight to make sugar. It can break down dangerous toxins. And through our DNA, give instructions to all life. When I started studying chemistry, I, I, I realized that nature can do chemistry that we can't do in the lab. And if we could mimic nature's way of doing it, we could do amazing things like capture carbon dioxide straight out of the atmosphere or produce as much green energy as we would like. Martin Hergboom has dedicated his research life to trying to do that which is so difficult, to understand nature's secret tricks when it successfully transforms one substance into another. And as a first step, Martin wants to succeed in acting like one strain of bacteria, which contains a protein so ingenious that it can hold two iron atoms and let them become so reactive, so highly charged, that together they form an almost magical sphere. This sphere can then break almost any chemical bond. Like inserting, for example, an oxygen atom in exactly the right place, so that the greenhouse gas methane becomes methanol, and then the same bacterium can live on the methanol. And this is something that we would really like to be able to do. Then we could take this very potent greenhouse gas and transform it into something useful, like biomass or fuel. But so far, no one knows how the bacterium does this. It is an extremely difficult mystery to solve how the bacteria's protein manages to hold on to and control that magical sphere. To reveal this, Martin wants to take pictures of how it works. Yes, and this is actually really difficult because these iron ions, or the magic sphere, if you'd like to call it like that, they are so highly charged, so they become very reactive, but also really unstable. So as soon as you expose it to any kind of radiation to take a picture, you lose that state. So that's the challenge of this whole thing, to be able to take a picture while they still have the properties that are required to do the chemistry. In order to do this, Martin and the team start by developing the bacteria's ingenious protein, the one that will hold the sphere. A massive amount of bacteria is therefore grown in this liquid. The bacteria are then crushed, and after a series of purification steps, the desired protein has been separated out. But in order to be able to take the pictures, the protein must first be formed into crystals. Then, a radical machine is needed to take the pictures while the protein crystal is still holding on to that magical sphere. And with this step, Martin has had a little luck. Because a few years ago, he was a visiting professor at Stanford University in California. Yeah, I mean, this is an amazing opportunity to have as a researcher to go to see new places and talk to other scientists and discuss new projects. And of course, California is not a bad place to live with, you know, San Francisco, national parks and surfing. My surfing skills are really, really poor, but I'd like them to be better. And perhaps most important of all, at Stanford, Martin found his dream machine. So big that it filled an entire cavern. Wow, yeah, this machine. It sends out X-ray laser pulses that are so incredibly short, a few femtoseconds, that's a millionth of a billionth of a second. Uh, you know, light travels seven times around the globe in one second, but these light pulses are only a few micrometers or thousands of a millimeter long. At the same time, the energy density is so high that it would be the equivalent of focusing all of the sun's light energy that hits the Earth down to one square millimeter. It's really amazing. And then I realized that this machine could really help us to take this picture of this magic sphere that we haven't been able to do. The crystals with the bacteria's protein must therefore travel from Stockholm to California. 
Here, the protein crystals are placed on a small conveyor belt. There, oxygen is added, which reacts with the iron atoms, which then becomes charged with increased power, creating that magic sphere. And then, the crystals of protein, atoms and all, go in to be x-rayed to get their picture taken. And when this happens, there is so much energy that the crystal explodes. Yes, we blow up the sample, but the nice thing is that that doesn't matter because the pulses are so short, so we get the picture before the sample has the time to blow up. So that's the, that's the neat thing. Uh, stuff that is so sensitive that we can't touch it, that we blow up. And so far, he has successfully managed to take pictures at slightly lower energy levels. This one, for example, is really interesting because it shows how the protein is just set up to start to react with oxygen to, to, to start the entire reaction. Now, it's just a matter of getting that picture at the precise instant when the magic sphere is caught. And right now we're putting all our efforts into to getting pictures of these fully charged states that are required to do uh, methane to methanol conversion. We've come pretty far, but we still have a lot of work to do. Uh, these experiments are really complicated, but I think we'll be able to, to be able to take these pictures, and then we'll be a, a big step closer in understanding how nature converts methane to methanol. If you can dream a little, one day we might be as good as nature to perform this type of chemistry, degrading toxins, capturing carbon dioxide, or producing as much green energy as we want straight from sunlight. It's still a long way to go, but the opportunities are really amazing.